All right, welcome back to the shop. All right, we've got a 2000 Chevrolet Express 1500 work van in here today that uh, does not want to run. It's a still work truck, uh, work van. It's got a five liter small block Chevrolet in it. Um, just a base model van. Well, what happened was that they were on the job site and it didn't want to run, so uh, they had it towed over to, to the shop here. And I went out and I tested some circuits. Um, if uh, you pop the hood, uh, there's a fuse, fuse and relay box down here in this fender well. And uh, the starter relay and the fuel pump relay on this one are side by side and it's the same relay. So at first I wanted to, I listened uh, at the gas tank when you turn the key on, had my son Caleb jump in and hit the key while I listened at the, at the gas tank with a stethoscope. Um, see if I could hear the electric pump running because they said they had a pump put in it about a year and a half ago or so and it was not running so I came up here and I switched the relays side to side uh, after I tested for power and because um, we know the starter it was spinning over so we know the starter relay was good and it's the same as the fuel pump relay so I just switched them side to side um, and still no fuel pump action and I took a rubber mallet Whop the bottom of the gas tank uh, while Caleb was hitting the key and zing, the fuel pump comes on. So that's just the old uh, way I, I, I test them, a trick to get that fuel pump woke back up and so you can drive into the shop. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, sometimes you can whop it like that and drive it for six months. Uh, usually not. It's just going to leave you stranded again somewhere. You just don't know when. Um, so it's a good thing to just go ahead and replace that fuel pump. It's, uh, sometimes, uh, the little electric motor gets a bad burnt spot and it's just, there's nothing you can do. It just lands in that spot and, uh, sometimes it lands in that spot every time or it's just the contacts or whatever in there. It's, uh, going bad. So, uh, a lot of these GMs had bad, uh, connector problems too. And some of the fuel pumps you buy, a lot of the Silverados that I've done will come with a wiring connector and you cut the pigtail off and wire in the new um, pigtail because it, it burns the uh, connections in the connector and sometimes melts them together. So I don't know if this one's going to be like that or not. I haven't dropped the tank yet, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing up in the air and uh, lower the gas tank. This thing's got like three quarters of a tank of gas in it according to the gauge. So I'm hoping uh, we can get the fuel pump in and out without making a royal mess with gas because the fuel pump comes out through the top of the gas tank. I have seen some people cut holes in the floor uh, to act, give you access to the fuel pump, uh, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to lower the gas tank out. Hopefully the strap bolts will cooperate and uh, won't strip out. Uh, I think that's a, a reason a lot of times people do the, the cut a hole in the floor method to try to get to the top of the pump because the the gas tank straps and i'll show you that in just a second um there's no way to get to the nut in the top with the tank in and uh sometimes they get rusty and the bolt doesn't want to come out it just spins and um you can't get the straps down without drilling the bolt out and replacing the hardware once you get the tank down so hopefully we don't run into that situation uh but we're going to find out here shortly. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna get this thing up in the air. Okay, give you a little perspective of what we're working with here. We got some fuel lines going in, a uh, fuel filter there. Uh, we've got a strap there, and a strap down there. And this gas tank is long and skinny. And what happens with gas tanks when they're long and skinny and they're three quarters away full, or even half uh, or quarter, the fuel will slosh when you get it un unlevel. It'll want to doop, flip down on you, so you got to be careful. Uh, I often like to use a transmission jack. I'll take the transmission jack, place it in the center, and lower it down like that. Uh, hopefully it will balance on that. Not have anybody else here with me. Kind of that scare me, but it worries me. Um, because if the gas tank, oftentimes too, I'll get it down just enough where I can throw a ratchet strap around it. And I'll ratchet strap it to the jack, to the uh, transmission jack. I'll show you that. Because uh, that's how I plan on doing it. But here's the bolts I was talking about. You got one bolt here. 
um, there's no way to access the back side of it because the back side of it is through that little hole there. So if it strips, you're pretty much screwed. Um, and this has been down before because you can see it's not all the way up. So I'm going to shoot some lube in it right there. So whoever put the gas tank back in didn't tighten it all the way back up. Um, and same with here. The nuts through here. And it's like a little sheet metal speed nut type deal. They just stick in there from the factory. So I'm going to shoot some lube in there because that one's not all the way tight either. Doesn't look like at least. And we'll get these straps down after we undo the fuel lines here um, and get those at least enough slack. I like to get them all the way done, uh, undone in case the tank was to fall. It doesn't rip the fuel lines out. I had that happen one time years and years ago. Uh, one got away from me and uh, pulled the fuel line down. So uh, learn from my mistakes. Don't do that. Uh, if you're doing it on the ground, uh, good, good luck. I mean, it, it's, it's doable. If you got a young back and young neck, which I don't, I've got arthritis and degenerative discs and a herniated disc in my back one time and I can't do it on the ground anymore. It just can't work that way. Uh, I can barely do it standing upright like this. So get this trans jack in place and see what we can do. Okay, I went ahead and uh, unhooked the fuel filter lines, fuel lines, unplugged the, I'm assuming that's the fuel pump connector, but I'm not positive. Uh, it looks like it is. It's a harness that goes up through here. So I'm assuming that's the fuel pump. Okay, so we're going to shoot some lube, like I said, on our connect or our bolts here. Let's see if I can get them on top of the, yeah, on top of the drive shaft. I don't know if that's going to get up in there. Yeah, I can see it walking up in there. All right. And yeah, we'll get this one. We'll let that sit a minute. All right, we've got our little cheap tranny jack. I think I got that thing at Northern years and years ago. It's pulled a bunch of transmissions though. Let me tell you, it's a little cheap jack right there has uh, had a bunch of transmissions pulled out with it. So it was well worth the money. I would like a bigger one, but it still works. So I hadn't needed to replace it yet. Got a board up in there just to give the tank a little rigidity, spread that out because these tabs will push up in the tank and I've never hurt one, but I like if I have the opportunity to put a board in there, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And I had one that fit perfect. So that's what we're going to do. Spread that footprint out. We'll find us a socket and get these straps down. All right. Got your jack up under there. We got our bolts moved up. Go ahead and run these bolts out. All right, one thing I forgot to do was take the filler tube out. Um, you know, where you fill your gas at. It runs right through there. So we're gonna take this tube out and we'll take try to take it off at the tank uh, so it doesn't hang us up when we're trying to lower the tank down. Um, should've did that before I raised it up, but that's okay. So don't forget that step. Pain to get to with the drive on the uh, of course, it's a tube inside a tube. It's got the vent inside it. So I'm gonna take this one off. Let's see if that helps anything at all. I don't know if it will. All right, I took the three screws out here, here, and here. On the filler network goes through. So we're gonna pop it, pop it through the body. Let 
You know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. Because it's got enough slack like that. To come on through when I when I pull the tank down. Uh, I mean, I lower it down that much. Just enough to get the pump out. I'm not sure yet. But that's got enough slack in it where I can I can lower the tank and uh, shouldn't interfere with anything. And when I lift it back up, I'll reposition what I just loosened. It doesn't feel like it has much gas in it. But what happened was the leveler was bad on the pump and it burnt the pump up because it was been trying to run it out of gas. So usually what I'll do at this point is I get it down a little bit. I'll throw me a safety rope over it, you know. Just in case there is. Or the lines because then it's just gonna be a pain in the butt once I get it down with a strap there. Gigantic drop shaft doesn't make anything easy. got the fuel tank locked down to the trans jack. Periodically just looking around making sure I'm not going to rip anything out. Lower it down a little more. Just starting to list this to that side I'm gonna throw a little pressure on it with the trans jack it's telling me that gas is rolling to the front
So we're going to unhook these lines, probably a return line or an evap line or something. It's got gas in it, it's a return line probably. charcoal canister yep. okay. all right so those are loose and out of the way we've got a big hose here to the canister now that's undone that should be everything I'm doing mine. There's a ground strap up there that's going to hold you up. The sad thing is we're losing this gas. And I ain't going to be able to recycle it out of that dirty bucket. And uh, there's no good way for me to catch it. It's coming. I might be able to get that to go right into a, right into a uh, gas can. Let me see if I can figure one out. All right, we're going to try to catch some of this. It's going to be fun for a little while. Oh, what can you do? <laughs> I don't want to waste all that gasoline, man. That stuff's getting expensive. Thanks, Biden. Okay, after catching lots of gas that was spilling out everywhere, uh, which is just part of doing these sometimes, uh, they come in with a lot of fuel in them, which I guess this thing did have a lot of fuel in it. Because it, uh, it dripped for about three hours. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot I could do about it. Uh, but we got it under control. We did catch some of it. Uh, some of it just had to hit the floor. Well, this is what we're working with. Now the tank's down. Uh, there was two options uh, that they gave me at the park store. It was a two sensor or two connector pump, which we have here, and uh, a one. Um, so some of them have this, which I believe is a pressure sensor. Some of them don't. Uh, ours does. So we had to wait uh, to get that. We had to order it. So we're going to disconnect our quick connect lines. We're going to unhook our connectors real quick. And uh, we're going to knock this lock ring off. You can take a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and just pop it. It'll uh, rotate and it'll unlock uh, the tab there. It'll unlock this ring and uh, allow you to pull the fuel pump module up out of the gas tank. It's got a little slide lock on it there. Plug it there. And these have these little quick connects. You push the tabs in, sometimes you push it back towards you and then the other way and it'll release. Okay. And one's bigger than the other. Uh, you got a supply and a return line, so you can't can't get it wrong. Um, a lot of times you got to take these connectors off, these little tabs or whatever. Uh, okay, this is not a this is not a hammer lock deal. This isn't one that rotates. This is uh, this has got a big clip. So I've got to get my snap ring pliers. It's got a big snap ring in it. Come on. 
well, let me flip these around. These are reversibles. pliers didn't do a whole lot of good there I had to use a flathead get that out of the way for a second and now we should be able to pull this joker up it's not sprung up they're spring loaded and uh, flip your here we you can see this thing's got the float on it so you kind of got to tilt it to the side Oops, gas is spilling everywhere. Get your float out. Stand it up and work, it, work your magic on getting that out of there. Now this thing's got a lot of gas in it, so you can take it and just dump it out. And I've got a catch pan up under me there, so. All right. We're not reusing that one. Uh, somebody put some grease on there. We'll make sure your opening's clean. I just like to look down on them too to see how dirty my gas tank is. It doesn't look bad. Don't see much in there. Okay, now that we've established that uh, our tank is clean inside, we don't need to flush it or anything like that. Um, we got a new seal, the new O-ring that comes with the pump. We walk the pump in, like so. And we know the pump goes this way because that's where our lines are flowing. Um, <clears throat> we'll make sure you have your lock ring handy and don't try to put it down on top of your fuel lines of course I'm going to put a little bit of Vaseline I'm going to put a little bit of Vaseline around that just so it pops down in the tank easier Just trying to lubricate the seal up. You don't have to put a ton on. This Vaseline won't hurt a thing. That's what I used. It's, uh, it's actually trans jelly for O-rings and seals and transmissions. And But it's the same thing as Vaseline. So we're just getting a little, a little lubrication on our seal there so things will slide in just a little easier. spring loaded so it's got tension on it you gotta get it down all the way to Chinatown there we go you gotta get it all the way in there all the way around which is kind of a pain It's a lot easier task if you've got a friend to help you hold it down. 
while you work it, work your magic here. But you can do it by yourself, see? Even my dumb ass can do it. All right. And there's a, a little tab right here too. You can't put the pump in the wrong way. All right. And I always check uh, my connector. Make sure everything looks good. Don't see any burning inside that connector. No hot spots. Wiring looks good. Um, I don't think we were having a wiring connector problem at all. But if you ever do, you want to you want to change uh, the connector for sure. And I'm going to put a little low temp grease in there and that connector before I connect it, um, just a because it's a good thing to have in a, in a connector. A little low temp grease from uh, my Volvo days <laughs> is left over from when I was a Volvo tech in the 90s. <laughs> still in the toolbox, still got a little bit left in it. We're milking that, but that too, for all it's worth. Okay, so you wanna make sure your wiring connector is in real good and tight. You don't want any, any loose connections at your, at your fuel pump. So she's in good and tight. See these, uh, my tabs aren't there. My lock tabs are not there. So we're gonna have to take the ones off of this uh, and install them on the new pump. Which I wish they'd come with new ones because man, when these things get start to get old, um, sometimes they break. You gotta get a pick. All right, it's a good pick. Get up under there. Come on, Bo. Ah, get one side up, other side pops back down. There we go. Got the other one. Line them up. Make sure they click in good and give them a little tug back. Make sure that bad boy is in there real good. You don't want to have to take this tank back down, right? So you go around and make sure your lock ring's in real good and all the little tabs. All right. Get your tools off your tank because it's time to go back up. Check on the other side and make sure my fuel filler is going where it needs to be going here. See what that just did? That's why I ratchet strap right there.
fuel sloshed and that bad boy. That thing wasn't unstrapped. That tank would have been out of here, baby. Watch those brake parking brake cables on the way back up. Forget to hook your hoses up on the side that you took off on the way down. Let's do that now. Going where it needs to go. Plug your main harness back in here. That's gonna pop in there. As this goes up, these two fuel lines will go back on the filter. It needs to go in there. Okay, let's go ahead and run her up where she can't fall on us. She can go anywhere now. Get that old ratchet strap out of there. Got that bolt started. Go ahead and give her a few more pumps. So I get this front strap started. started. So now I'm looking for my air hose.
forgot. I forgot a charcoal canister of those. I should be able to get to it from the side. Yeah, come on. Feel for it because I stuck it up. It's all. that pull back off if those clips don't sound good they will leak on you and that's not good This one right here was just like that when I got to it and I was able to yank it off. See that? How it's not clicked in? They come they said it was leaking from somewhere. I guarantee that's where it was. Although I didn't see it leak while I had it. I guarantee that's what it was. And that could have been partially due to the pump burning up. I don't know. Because that wasn't clicked in good. Maybe pumped all the gas out and Ran the pump dry long enough to overheat it. I don't know. this fuel filter on um, didn't get the tab done good it kind of mashed them down these back in their holders bang and bang Okay. All right. 
We got our connector back in. We got our fittings back in. And our lock tabs are in the right spot this time. Everything's back into position. We got our holders are back in. I can release the pressure off my jack stand. Let that fall. And I gotta put my filler tube back up, put some gas in it, and we'll be firing this pad boy up. Let them get out of here with this work truck so they can get back to work with it. We got it down, we got everything put back together. Uh, we're gonna jump in and see if we can't fire this thing up. Uh, like I said, the record driver broke their doorknob off, their door handle, so you gotta, you gotta open it from the inside. I'm gonna reach in. We're gonna bump the key. I know you can't hear that on camera, but I can hear it. The pump just ran. It sounded like it just ran again when I shut it off. We're gonna see if it'll. It's pumping. It's got a quarter tank in it. It's about right. We dropped about uh, probably about three gallons out of it, four gallons with it. So they're dripping forever. I mean, I may have lost more than that. Uh, caught some of it in the in that pan, which we cannot reuse because that's dirty. Uh, caught caught a little bit in here, uh, maybe a half a gallon. I caught a little bit on this one. That one was about three quarters full and uh and i filled that one up that's two and a half um she was empty so we got two and a half let's call that three four yeah so we pulled we pulled four or five gallons out uh and it's still on quarter tank but she's obviously running <laughs> we solved that problem uh happy to get them back on the road and i appreciate the business Hopefully you learned something out of this, and if you did, you know, you know what to do. All the YouTube stuff. Peace.